that, uh, that must have been fantastic. Uh, two of my very good friends and truly two of the great education leaders in California. Um, I was actually over speaking to a group called uh, East County Mamas and Papas for Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, tons of uh, extremely engaged parents, and there were at least a handful of people who were running for school board uh, who were there as well. So uh, it's pretty exciting because I see this all across California right now. Is you have a level of uh, engagement and involvement, and people stepping up like we have never seen before. Uh, and uh, regardless, number one, I've been tracking and following all the work that you've done over the last several years. You've been pushing a boulder uphill. I just want to say thank you for, for being a voice of the second question I have is uh, uh, that uh, recently was caught uh, trying to recruit students into Antifa, mm -hmm. uh, by the way. And he uh, admitted that his goal was to turn them into revolutionaries. Uh, he got a golden parachute, three years pay as severance. Wow. Pretty good, right? But I do think that the vast majority of teachers uh, really want what's best for kids, you know? And uh, my mom's a teacher, uh, I have a teaching stint, uh, so I love teachers. The unions are a totally different story. They're a political operation. They figured out how to completely control the system. And you don't really have independent unions anymore either. The CTA has just taken them over, or you know, the, you know, the, they're all just subsidiaries, um, the biggest of which is UTLA, and, LA, which you know, has just become, I mean, we remember their, their sort of manifesto in the early stages of COVID, where they came out and said, okay, here's what we want before schools reopen. You gotta get rid of Prop 13, you gotta defund the police, you gotta abolish uh, charters. What else was on there? They had some crazy stuff. Medicare for all. Medicare for all, thank you. So uh, this is, um, you know, in, in my view, the biggest problem. And, you know, of course, they've also been very savvy about the way they run their operation. They've bought off a lot of the other sort of uh, liberal special interest groups that might object to the fact that you're making life really hard on, on poor kids in minority communities, uh, but they spread their money around to make sure that everyone is, is on the same page. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your question. And, um, the quality of the people who are becoming teachers now is sort of being diminished because women who are majority teachers now have access to jobs in the rest of the Well, I do think that teacher quality is an important issue. And uh, it is, um, I think, true that the sort of training you get in order to become a teacher is not aligned with necessarily what makes uh, an effective teacher in many cases. Uh, you know, a lot of our schools of education uh, are just totally, uh, you know, uh, caught up in, the, in the, the, the prevailing ideology of the left, uh, don't provide necessarily the sort of training that that makes you effective. There are some good ones, but you know there are a lot that aren't. And then what the unions have done is they've made it so there is really one, in most cases, uh, acceptable pathway uh, to being a teacher, which is going through the entire uh, credentialing process that they uh, set forth, which is designed to kind of get you under their control. Uh, so alternative credentialing, you know, bringing in people who are experts in their subject areas and now want to teach, they make all that very difficult. Uh, and uh, so I think that, you know, uh, if we explored some of those options, it'd be uh, a good way to, to recruit high caliber high people to teach. Uh, let's take one more. Uh, the activist teachers, if they didn't want the parents to know that it would be kept secret, and the districts will send out a gender support plan to teachers directing them that you must now refer to this kid as this gender, let's say it's Bobby, now it's Cindy. But when you talk to that parent's teacher, or when you talk to that, that student's, parents, you cannot let that be known that you're calling Bobby Cindy at school and you have to pretend that Bobby's still Bobby. So it makes them keep that secret from the kids. And yet in 2021, we passed a law in California that requires all incoming police officers to have a bachelor's degree. And in that law, they cited neuroscience that said, you know, we rely on the science that says children cannot make good decision-making work um, good decision making or, or processing skills because their brains are not fully developed. So how can you have a law in 2021 that says kids cannot make good decisions, but we can still have a law from 2016 that says kids can 
change their gender and hide it from the parents all the way down to kindergarten. How 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 is that possible? Well, your question is is, is presupposing that there's any sort of rational basis. <laughs> <laughs> Sensories 107. That's the one. Yeah, it's like, I don't know how they even come up with this stuff. But, uh, you know, and we've had a lot of victories, by the way. I, I don't think that we, we talked about it. This, uh, I don't know, maybe it was mentioned earlier, but a lot of the very worst bills were killed in the last mm -hmm. And that's a result of people stepping up uh, and fighting back. But yeah, it's like people asking, how do I sort of stomach what goes on there? And when we see things pass in, like, just make no sense, do so much harm. No even debate. They don't even try to give real reasons for these things sometimes. And just the corruption, right? With doing things just that we know are wrong for kids. How do you stomach it? And I gotta tell you, sometimes it is like just banging your head against the wall, and I walk out of there and it's like, oh my god. Uh, but being among folks like you who uh, are so passionate and dedicated to fighting for the right things, and who care so much about ensuring that kids in our state get the education they deserve, uh, that is really re-energizing and rejuvenating for me, and it makes it well worth putting up with the nonsense I have to do in Sacramento. So thank you very much. Thank you so much.